Good morning, good morning, good morning. What an awesome morning it is. It is a Friday. TGIF, thank God it's Friday. I thank you for the other days. It's just something about Friday. When Oh, it's a three-day weekend this week. <laughs> three-day weekend because Monday is Memorial Day. But it's an awesome day, an awesome day. I got up with a, with a, uh, <clears throat> God put something in me this morning and I just want to share. I just want to share. Good morning, Keisha. Good morning. Uh, what is, let me ask y'all this. What is your response to your adversity? Stuff don't feel good. You think you think you got you uh, all on you. Stuff is uh, just weighing you down. What is your response? Are you going to be bold and say, God, I know you got this. I need you to give me what I need to get through this. Or are you going to sit over there in the corner and say, oh, woe is me. Why me, Lord? I got a question for you. Why not you? What makes you so you so perfect, you so good, that stuff can't come in your life that you wasn't expected? You can't get adversity. Hey, hey, Regina, you can't get adversity. Adversity can't come to your house because you've been so good. You done done everything right. You done treat people right. Okay, okay. So, so adversity, your response to adversity is still leaning and depending on God. Your response to adversity is, I'm going to win. I'm going to win because I am a winner. I am victorious through this and through this. If he brought you through that, he'll bring you through this. See, that's the posture. That's the attitude that we need to have. Your response is your responsibility. Your responsibility is to stand up and be bold. Your responsibility is on it when, it, when it's on you. Your adversity, sometimes we bring it on ourselves, but sometimes we don't. Sometimes we don't. Let's take Job, for instance. He didn't bring that on himself, but his posture well, still, I'm going to trust and believe in God. They may, yet they may slay me, but I'm still going to trust you. I'm still going to believe in what you told me. That, that holds true to us today. Today, we need to still hold on to God's unchanging hand. Hold on to the word that he gave you. God gave each and every one of us a word. Even before you woke up this morning, y'all might not want to admit it, but God talks to you right as you're waking up. Right as you, you, you just laying there, just, just thanking him for just life. Thanking him for life. Thanking him for those, that, those twins, Grace and mercy and you got one more thing he gives you every day that's opportunity so your response your response to stuff that don't feel good your response to your adversity your response to stuff is weighing you down lord help me help me help me you <laughs> Even when you, do, when you put yourself in those situations, you have to own it. You have to own it. You can't act like you, you are so innocent and folks just doing stuff to you for nothing. What have you done? What have you done to bring yourself to this situation? You have to own yours. You can't look at somebody else and, and, and say you, you all that. You can't pluck, pluck out there and you got a beam in your own. Sweep around your own front door. Make sure your, your, your porch, your garret is, is cleaned before you try to tell somebody else how to clean theirs up. We have to be in a posture to tell God, I did it. I'm, God, I'm truly sorry. Yes, I did that. I can own that. Do you know when you can own your own? That's showing not only responsibility, but that's showing growth. When you can own your own, you are growing to a new level in God. I want to continue to, to be on a, a new level of God every day. I want more of God. I don't know about you. I can't answer for you. But I know Gigi wants more of God. There's more of me that the world needs. And that there's more of the world that's coming at me. But the world needs what you have on the inside. The world needs what you have on the inside so they can move to the place in God that they need to be. But people are looking at you. They're looking at your response, excuse me, to your situation that doesn't feel good. They're looking at you, how you respond. 
how you respond to your adversity, how you respond to the trouble, how you respond to ridicule. It's not, it, it, don't, don't try to get back at nobody because they did something to you. Love those who curse you. Love those who, who ridicule you. Love those who it, all by themselves throw you up under the exhaust pipe. See, I quit saying the bus. They throw you up under the exhaust, exhaust pipe because you get on the exhaust pipe, you're going to start choking and choke out probably. I don't know that for sure. I'm just using an analogy. Don't nobody say I said that. I'm just using an analogy. So forgive them. Don't y'all know forgiveness is not, not for the other person, it's for you. You have to forgive so that can free you. See, because why you holding on to stuff? The person that you mad at, they going on about their business. They don't even know you mad. They don't know why you mad because they're going on with their life. But let me tell you, when you allow, allow stuff to hold you, hold you captive, like your past, what somebody did to you, do you know that stop your growth? Do you know that stop you from moving forward? Do you know that causes you some anguish, heartache, and pain? Because you're mad at somebody they don't even know why? Forgive them. You can go to them. You can call them. You can text them. Forgive them. Tell them I forgive you so you can be free. So that load that's, lift, that, that's on you can be lifted. Because unforgiveness is a heavy weight. It's a heavy weight that, that, that we try to mask. We act like we happy. We act like we, 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 we love everybody. Okay, okay. Yes, we supposed to. We supposed to love everybody. But guess what? When, until you grow to the point that you can look at somebody and say, I forgive you for what you did to me, they might not even be aware. Say, I forgive you. You don't have to go into a long, drawn explanation. Most of the time, people know, know what they've done to you. They, they, you don't have to even tell them. They know what they've done. They, after, you forget, after you forgive them or after you ask for forgiveness, that's on them whether they're going to accept if you've done what you're supposed to do. I don't even know why I'm going here, y'all. I, I really don't. I, forgiveness. <laughs> and that ain't even my topic. <laughs> See, that's why I don't do topics. That's why I don't do topics. Because God had me going other places. Forgiveness is not for the other person. It's for us. We have to get in our head. If we want to get closer and closer to God, we have to learn how to forgive. We have to learn how to forgive. It's your responsibility to forgive the next person. It's your responsibility to forgive that person, the, whoever it is. We have responsibilities as believers. Our responsibility is be grateful, be thankful, pull each other up and stop pushing each other down. Stop putting each other down because they don't walk like you. They don't talk like you. They, they don't speak like you. Stop, stop, stop. Get your mouth off. Get your mouth off of people. Because you don't know what God has placed in their life. You don't know what, what God has placed in them to tell you. You don't know. So get your mouth off of God's children. All of us are ministers whether you believe it or not. Some was just called to be in the forefront. But all of us are ministers and evangelists. All of us are supposed to evangelize, telling somebody about the goodness of Jesus, telling somebody how God will save, heal, deliver, set free. All of us are supposed to be telling people that. You're supposed to tell somebody, God did it for me, baby. He'll do it for you because God has no respect of person. He has no respect of person. There's no little eyes and big U's. Everybody it's the same in God's sight. How, what is your response when adversity comes in your life, though? What is your response when stuff that happens that really don't feel good? You may want to cry. It, it don't, ooh, don't let nobody tell you you can't cry. That, that, that um, your emotions get away with you. Okay, emotions, they're part of the human being, correct? Okay, 
So you can't have emotions. You can cry. You can't because crying is cleansing. Crying is cleansing. Crying is cleansing. It's a form of cleansing you. So release it. Guess what? Because God will come and wipe the tears from your eyes. He'll put a smile on your face that nobody else can. He, he, he will give you happiness that the world can't give you. And the world can't take it away. He will give you peace beyond all understanding. You got to understand that your response to adversity is important. I need you to understand you got to be bold. You got to be bold. I didn't say disrespectful or rude. Be bold because you know that God is, that he's here. That the, the saying is God is going to show out. He going to show up. Okay. He's already up. He's about to show out in your life. He's already in your life, but he's about to show out in your life. Do you believe that he's going to show up and show out in your life? See, because he's already in my life. He's showing out right about now. He's showing out in my life. I have more peace than I, I've had in years. I'm getting closer and closer to God than I ever thought I would be. I have people calling me to ask me questions about the Bible. Ask me questions about situations in their life. And I pray about it before I respond. Because I need God to give them a response, not me. I don't want you to see Gigi. I want you to see the Jesus in me. It don't matter what I have on, have my hair look, and don't, I don't want you to see me. I want you to see God. I want you to see the God that reigns in my life. The God that reigns in me, I need you to see it. I don't want you to look at Gigi when she's speaking and say, oh, that's just Gigi. I need you to see the, hear the message that God is giving you. Your response is important. How you respond to things that happen in your life, they're important. And your, your, this is our response. <clears throat> the verse is, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. That should be your response. Bless the Lord at all times and keep a praise in your mouth. Sometimes you will be surprised. You'll have a praise on the inside and you'll begin to praise him to yourself. And all of a sudden you just begin to start worshiping God because he's been so good. When you look back over your life, and you see that some times in your life, you could have been dead and gone. You just break out with a praise and say, thank you, Lord. You left me here for a time such as this. You left me here so I can get to know you better. You left me here so I can walk tall like you're calling me to. You left me here to be bold. You left me here to be your mouthpiece. I'm just testifying for myself. I'm just testifying. This is my testimony. See, December 18, 1990, I thought I was going to die that day because somebody broke in my house. I know some of y'all have heard it before. Some have not. But that's my testimony. He didn't touch me. God said, no, you can't have her. I got something for her to do. I didn't catch on till some years later now. <laughs> but my point is, I told God yes in 2011. And, and you know, when you're starting something new, it, it's, it's new. It's new. You don't know the ins and outs of what you're doing. So I went to God in prayer. I had a men mentor before I, before I accepted my calling. And it's, it's just something that... <laughs> When you know God has a calling on your life, it doesn't matter to me who thinks I can do what I do. Because God has already given me, he's already appointed me, anointed me, and validated me, and approved me to do what I do. He's already done it. He put the first book in my system, and I wrote it. And from that book came 12 more books. I wrote them. To help somebody else. I write to help people. I don't write necessarily for me. I sell, sell a few here and there. But my goal is to bless you. My goal is to help you. <laughs> 
Y'all don't understand. It is your response. How are you going to, going to respond from this day on to your adversity? How do you respond? I respond on my knees, on my belly, and on my face. That's my response. Because that God is my first choice and not my last resort. God is my first choice and not my last resort. Let me tell you what I mean by that. There's some things going on within me, my household. Don't nobody know but God. Don't nobody know but God. But I'm still trusting God. I still trust you, God. Even when I can't trace you, I can trust you. I talk to him every day. I woke up before I actually got up. And I just began to tell God, thank you. Thank you for my life. I fell on Monday, but wasn't a bone broke. I just had a, a, a two strains, muscle strains. I'm good. Nothing's broke. And I'm thankful. Now, this might be my new to somebody, but somebody might need this. So if, if you need it, just, just keep listening. If you need, if, if, if I encourage you, just keep listening. God is going to give you something else. God is going to give you something else to, to wake up and, and, and say, okay, I can do this. I can live in this life because sometimes it used to be that I didn't even want to live because I thought my life was so bad. I would say on several occasions when life seemed to be all on my shoulders and I didn't know what to do. God, I wish I wasn't here, but he corrected me. He said, you're here for a purpose. There's a purpose on your life. There's a purpose in your belly. I need you to listen to me. Don't listen to what the naysayers say. I need you to listen to me. Listen to my instructions and follow my directions. So I come here to tell you tonight, today. Listen to God. Listen to his instructions and follow his directions. Watch God. God is in the blessing business. He's in the healing business. He's in forgiving business. He's the in the he, he's in the restoring business. God is getting ready to restore some lives. He's getting ready to restore some families. He's getting ready to restore some marriages. God is getting ready to restore you. Restore you. Turn back to God and watch him. He gonna, he's standing there with his arms wide open. Walk to him. Say, Dad, I need you. That's what I used to say to my biological father too. Daddy, I need you. I need your help, Daddy. I need you to walk with me, Daddy. I need you, I need you to, to talk to me, Daddy. Lead me and guide me, Daddy. That's what I call God, Daddy. Because he my daddy. Y'all talk the way you want to. But he my daddy. And Jesus is my brother. So I'm joint ass with Jesus. So that means if I'm joint ass with Jesus. And God is my daddy. That means. Hmm, I got all power. Not some. Not a little bit. I got the same amount. <coughs> Apparently the devil don't want me to tell y'all this. I have the power. The same power my brother rolls with. You have the same power in you. Operate in your power. Don't misuse it. Learn how to use it. Don't misuse your power to hurt somebody. But learn how to use it to help somebody. Learn how to use it to bless somebody. It's your responsibility. <laughs> to use your power correctly. You using it incorrectly to hurt somebody. God is going. He, that's in your book. When you go before his face. When he call you home, he going to list everything you did. He going to ask you why you do that. Why did you use the power to mistreat somebody? Why did you, you misuse your power? I'm just telling you what God is telling me to tell you. Use your power because you do have the power. You have the power to conquer anything that comes upon you. You have the power to be victorious. You have the you are the victor. You have the power. Victor and not victim. You have the power to, uh, to, for a winning mindset. You are a winner. It's not over until you win. It's not over until you win. Do you do you think you're a winner? Do you know you're a winner? If you think it, get to know it. 
Get to know God for yourself. You can't go on what grandmama, granddaddy, daddy, mama said. You got to have a personal relationship with God. Your relationship has to be personal. Something that you and God have. See, me and God, we have one. We have a personal relationship. You got to get to know God for yourself. You can, I can't go on what Reverend Jordan used to say. I can't go on what Henry Brown uh, uh, Jordan used to say. I can't go on what Robert Lee, Robert Lee Bob Smith Sr. said. I can't go on what my mother says. I have to go on my own relationship. That was good growing up because I was raised in the church. <laughs> and the word says, train up a child in the way they should go. And when they get old, they shall not depart. They may stray, i.e., but they hear these voices in their head. Sound like your granddaddy preaching. Sound like your grandmama saying something. Sound like your daddy saying something. <laughs> you won't depart. You won't. You didn't depart. You didn't depart from it. You tried to stray, but God reeled you back in. He reeled you back in. You're not supposed to be over there. You're supposed to be here. I'm just telling, that's my testimony. That, yeah, that might not be yours. But God said, I wasn't supposed to be over there. I was supposed to be right here. So when I began to be obedient, God began to talk to me. He began to minister to me. He began to build me up when others tore me down. He began to love on me when I, th when I thought didn't nobody love me. He began to build me up where I was torn down. He began to strengthen me where I was weak. So, cause baby, it's been some times you've been weak. It's been some times that I wanted to throw in the towel. But God said, you can't throw in the towel. Your race is not finished. You are a winner. You're not going to stop until you win. You are a winner. You are victorious. You are the head and not the tail. You're above and not beneath. You're the lender and not the bar. See, learn how to say what God's word says about you. What does his word say about you? Have your relationship, your posture, when you go through something, what is your response? I want you to think on that. What is your response when adversity, trouble hits your house? And let me, let me, let me give you this disclaimer. If you hadn't been in trouble, keep living. Because all of us have been out going back and coming back out but if it if trouble hadn't hit your house keep living because it's coming keep living because you're going to experience some things in your life you never thought you would keep living because every now and again trouble hits all of our house trouble's going to hit your house but what is your response when it hits your house? What's your response? I'm still saying thank you for my life, God. Thank you for my life. <coughs> the good, the bad, the ugly, and indifferent. Thank you for my life. Because God, you had left me. And I want to thank you. You turned me around when I thought I was lost. But turn around and come out, come to find out I wasn't really lost. I was just going the wrong direction. And he turned me around. He said, come back to me, G. Come back to me because your destiny is where I am. So your destiny is where God is. Keep walking with God. Keep talking with God. Call him your own because he mine. I can be real possessive. He mine. What is your response to the adversity that you are going through, that you have gone through? What's your posture in the time you're having adversity? Y'all be blessed. Love you, love you, love you. I have to run. I'm going to pray and we're going to get off of here. I love each and every one of you. Y'all have an awesome day. Father God, thank you for allowing us to see one more day, God. Thank you for those three things that you give us on a daily basis. Grace and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, God. 
You give us new opportunities every day, God. Please give us what we need so we don't let an opportunity pass us by to share the word of God, to share you with somebody, God. The opportunities that come our way that have to do with our business, our ministry, our goals, our visions, don't let it pass us by, God. Open our eyes. Open our discernment, God. Let us have discernment like never before, God. Let us see what you see through your eyes, God. Let us see who we are in through your eyes, God. It's not about us. Let us take out the, out the layers of who we know and continue to put on the whole arm of God. Protect yourself, God. Protect us, God. Keep a hedge of protection around us, God. Keep a blanket of protection around us, God. As we go to our respective places, God, we ask you that you go there before we get there. Saturate the place with your glory, with your anointing, with, <clears throat> with, your, with you, God. Just the aroma of you in the building. Just the aroma of you in the building, God. So, so it can be conducive for you to, you to reign in there, God. We're asking that you just go there and shower the place with your glory right now, God. God. Put a smile on people's face, God. People walking around like they're mad at the world, God. But they have everything to smile for. Why? Because you woke them up this morning. You started them on their way, God. Me, I'm going to tell you, thank you for it, God. Because you didn't have to wake Gigi up. You didn't have to blow breath in her body. But I tell you, thank you right now, God. Thank you for being our God all by yourself. God, we release all that has weighed us down, God. We're giving it to you, God. We're giving it to you. We're trying to fight battles that don't even belong to us. And we're thanking you right now just to having the response, having the response, having the response to praise you through it all, God, to worship you through it all, God. We're going to bless your name at all times and your praise shall continually be in our mouth. We praise you right now, God, just for you being you. God, we love you right now. We adore you right now. We give you all that we have to give, God. We surrender it all to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. I love each and every one of you all. Y'all have an awesome day. If you need me, reach out. I'm, I'm available. I love you. I love you. I love you. We'll talk soon.